Hey everybody, what's up? This video is brought to you by Linode Cloud Computing. If you're looking for web hosting for your next project, I recommend you check them out. They're going to save you a ton of money over Azure AWS. There's also a $100 credit in the description tab below. They also have a YouTube channel, so if you want to check out more from them directly about the products that they offer, you can go ahead and check that out. All right, so what I want to talk about in this video is going to be the biggest changes for C Sharp 9.0 as well as .NET 5 and just to really briefly mention, the naming is always confusing when you're dealing with Microsoft, but uh, C Sharp has been around for over 20 years now. It's based on the .NET runtime. The .NET runtime used to only work on Windows. A couple years ago, many years ago now, it started moving over to be cross-platform, so it would work on Mac and Linux. So we had .NET Core. And .NET Core, we had different versions of it, like 1. Point whatever, and then 2. Point whatever, and then we had 3.1. And then after 3.1, we've now skipped over version 4 and moved directly to uh, 5. So it's .NET 5. And in addition to that, if you're going to write the latest in C Sharp, if you use .NET 5, then you'll have all of the C Sharp language features for version 9.0, which came out in November 20 or November 10th of last year in 2020. And the main reason why they skipped over version 4 is just simply because the .NET runtime is still widely used and there's a lot of businesses that are still just running Windows and, and a lot of their code is still just .NET 4 and that is not cross-platform. All right, so some of the biggest changes with C Sharp 9.0 is that we used to have this like uh, spelled out version. This this comes from, it's very Java like, obviously like C like. You have a main function, so any sort of console application, you always have this main function. But whereas ASP.NET, it's kind of like hidden. It's more abstracted and DS DLLs and such. But basically, .NET um, was like well, with .NET 5 and C Sharp 9, all this stuff can just simply be taken out, and you can just simply replace it with a system.console write and you don't need a main function anymore so a lot of beginner programmers like that especially coming from like python uh, and other languages where you don't need to have a main function all right so when dealing with c sharp we typically define types using classes or structs and now we have this new record type where if you're dealing with data it can make a lot of sense to use a record over a class. So to see that in action, if I were going to go ahead and define a public class, I'm just going to go ahead and add it to this uh, same file here because I don't want to have to create another file or anything like that. So I'm going to create this public class called class test, test score and it has a, a high score and a low score. All right, so in my main function, I'm going to go ahead and use those classes. I'm going to instantiate two different uh, variables here, class user one and class user two, and I'm going to give them the same amount, the, the same exact data. So they, they have the same exact uh, data schema structure, whatever you want to call it. They have a, the same high score, same low score. I don't know why I just said that three times. Guess I'm just trying to make sure you guys understand it. But anyway, uh, so down here, I'm going to do a simple equality check here. We're going to console right line to see if class user one is equal to user two, even though they have the same data and they're of the same class type. All right. So you can see I have a lot of debugging warning kind of crap going on here. But um, if I do the equality check on these two class users, I get the, the fact that it's false. So even though they have the same data, well, the record is actually for dealing with uh, similar data type. So if we use the new record type and do the same type of equality check, it'll actually return true. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how to use the new record type. So if I go ahead and declare it, I'm going to declare the record type inside of my public class program. It's technically valid to declare it outside of that, inside of as long as it's in your namespace for whatever your code is or whatever you know, project name you have. Uh, but the reason I'm going to put it inside the public class program method here is so I get syntax highlighting and the syntax highlighting is it doesn't work when I put it outside uh, for some reason even though it's still valid all right so now I'm going to new up two variables below uh, the class based variables that we newed up and this is going to use the new record type so same exact data here and then we're going to do the equality and see if we get a, a match here and I've already told you we would so I mean it's you know whatever I kind of ruined that anyway uh, I'm going to show you that you do get true. So it's actually looking at the actual data structure. And if they match, then it's going to be true. Now you can override, though, how that equality check is taking place. 
so for instance, if like you had an age on somebody and you said, okay, uh, it's so-and-so is true. If both of their ages are over 30, like you could actually be very specific on your data points. And, um, it really just kind of opens up a whole new way of defining and dealing with large amounts of data in C sharp. Another thing you'll hear is that records, they, they can pro provide a productivity boost because they can be immutable. But the thing is, is that that is an option. So it's not like a record has to be immutable or it's always immutable. And for those that don't know, immutable means that it cannot be changed once you actually create the um, or instantiate it and give it data. Records also have the ability to add computed values pretty easily as well. So like if I wanted to go and modify this record inside the curly braces here, I can go ahead and add another property, which uh, it does have to be declared as public. Otherwise, it won't work. Uh, but I'm going to have a double that takes the average. So it just adds the high score plus the low score divided by two. So go ahead and run that. And you'll see as we um, like if I actually print out one of these users here, so I'll console log the user. Where is my IntelliSense, man? All right, so anyway, I'll put user one. And then here you can see that the average is automatically computed. And then now similar to class names, you would actually just use dot notation to then get whatever sort of piece of data you need uh, on the record type. So you can see that's just gonna get the computed value. All right, C-sharp 9 also got new equality operators. So there's now new reserved keywords, which is is, or, and not. Um, so those are new equality operators where before we would have, you know, uh, and, or, and then not. We would use symbols. But now you can actually spell that out. So I know some people have actually already stated that they don't like it because it's like more than, uh, and we've now created a second way to do the same thing. Uh, but a lot of people say that something like this is a lot easier to read than using those sigils uh, that I mentioned before. So to see that in action, this is the extension method on the character type that was added here. So I can go ahead and just, uh, it'll say whether or not it's a letter or a separator when I run the program. And you get true. And if I change it to a number... We get false. All right, so next one's going to be init only setters, which is short for initialization, which means that you can only set a value when you initialize it. And therefore, after that's done, you can never change that value again, sort of like a constant. So those of you who have done C sharp before, you're probably very familiar with your public class. And then you have your properties on that with get set. And then you're using your constructor or initializer to set those values where this uh, now allows you to, instead of using the set keyword, you're going to use the init. And you can see, I still don't get IntelliSense on that uh, based on the C sharp extension, but uh, very new. And once you set that init value, like here you can see the object is being created, the age is being assigned. And if I go to try to change the age after it's assigned and initialized, then it's going to go ahead and complain here. So you can see that it prints out 20. And then we get the actual error message that an init only property or indexer can't be assigned twice. All right, so in C Sharp, it's always been a statically typed language where you have to be very specific about the types that you're dealing with. And when I'm constructing something here, I could have omitted the type on the left-hand side if I use a var. Um, however, you want to keep the type on the left-hand side for readability. And with new features of C Sharp 9, I don't have to actually duplicate the type when I'm newing it up. I could just simply use the new keyword with open and close parentheses and it works the exact same way. Now, obviously I can't have a var there. Uh, that wouldn't make any sense because it doesn't know what type uh, you're dealing with anymore. But as long as it's declared on the left-hand side, uh, you don't have to duplicate that on the right. So this is functionally equivalent to what we had before. If I run it again, you can see that I don't have any errors or anything and I get the output. So um, yeah, you're gonna see this a lot more probably just to reduce the amount of boilerplate code that is needed to write.
All right, so if you're learning to code and you want to learn with me, I recommend you check out my website, codehawk.com. I do have some C-sharp stuff there for like ASP.NET Core. I'm going to be adding a lot more. There's going to be a C-sharp 9 course coming up here pretty soon. Uh, but in the meantime, the ASP.NET will at least get you started with web development for C-sharp because that's a whole nother ball of wax. But if you're interested in Python, SAS, React, Vue, TypeScript, or more, just check out my website, codehawk.com.